Chapter 6, Old Wounds. I'm hoping we find out a little bit more about the story with Lin and her sister and Toph. I'm really curious about what's going on. You should come play with us. I don't think I'd be much competition since I can't metal bend. Lin never offered to train you? Oh yeah, that's a good I guess point. I never thought to bring it up because I was learning to airbend, then there was the pro bending, then I got tied up fighting the equalist. <laughs> right. It was a busy few months. Um, yeah, and then I defeated Chaos and saved the universe for 10,000 years. You know, no big deal. But is she going to learn how to metal bend? That'd be cool. I don't think Aang ever learned it. Well, it's probably for the best. I'm sure Lin would be a horrible teacher. <laughs> I'd be happy to show you the basics. I don't know why. I have like a weird sense about her. Things are just too perfect. What's the catch? You should try it too. Right. Uh, nah. I'm more of an earth guy. The dirt, rocks, you know, maybe some light gravel. That's, that's kind of where my heart is. It occurred to me after watching the last episode that Bolin was the one most excited about the prospect of meeting Toph. And I realized it's because it's an earthbender. And to earthbenders, Toph must be like the greatest hero imaginable. It'd be cool if you learned metal bending though. Barrick. It works. Knew it. <laughs> Julie, mark it down. That is pretty cool Magnet though. Suit test successful. But to what end? On to phase two. Julie cleans up this mess. <laughs> I wonder how much he's paying her. Probably not enough. How many push-ups did you do last night? Because I did like 50. Liar. Nobody can do 50 push-ups. Zalfu is the most secure city in the world. That was very touchy. You need to relax. I'm fine. Ugh. I know a great acupuncturist in town who will be able to help you. Seems like you made quite a stir on Air Temple Island. Is that a tree in their apartment? We leave today. <gasps> There's no money. I just made my last delivery. We don't want money. Just another fun day with Zaheer and crew. Hang out in the apartment, steal a truck. How many of those things are you going to stick in me? All of them. There's nothing to be scared about. I'm not afraid of needles. Please, close your <laughs> eyes. <laughs> okay. Take deep breath. This is Lynn's first deep breath in her entire life. Your chi must be powerfully blocked. We're going to need more needles. Acupuncture often taps into people's buried memories. Buried memories. Uh-huh. Here we go. Wow, you almost look like a real cop. You're supposed to be in school. Oh, no. Where'd you get all that stuff? I fell off the back of a truck. Get your hands off of me! You have so much potential. You're ruining your life. At least I have a life. Ugh. That hurts. It's weird, but in this situation, I identify both with Lin and Sue. I feel like they're two halves of my experience growing up. It's difficult when you see someone you care about start to slip. Your instinct is to grab on, but unfortunately that has the opposite effect. And the weird consequence of that is that you end up pushing them away. Because of that, you're no longer in the category of like ally or a category of someone safe to talk to because you now bring judgment. And so you end up losing the one good element of your relationship you do have, which is just like openness, you know? But it's hard to know where that line is too because you don't want to let someone do things that are destructive to them. It's really hard to have the faith in other people to figure it out when you see them going through hard times. Like Sue's obviously hanging out with criminals and that's not something that you want as like an older sibling. And also muddying the waters is the fact that it's not totally pure affection. Like it's not just Lynn caring about her younger sister, it's also a rivalry. And that's all mixed together, it's hard to separate. So that'll cloud our judgment. Well, it's not Guru Pratik, but it'll do. The metals have a unique property, making them easier to bend. Where have I seen this before? Looks familiar. That's amazing. Do the Nickelodeon logo. Bolin? He wants it. Is that you? He wants it. Just be honest. Oh, hey ladies. I was just, uh, I was just looking for Pabu. Pabu! <laughs> right. On shoulder. Oh, look, there you are. You know, I thought something was chewing on my ear. I'm probably gonna need to get a shot. Pabu has a sort of a, a venom. He does? I mean, only like one earthbender in a hundred can metal bend. The only thing limiting you is your attitude. You know, well, I maybe I'll just, I'll just stay and watch. He wants it so bad. That's why it's scary. Try to focus on the fine pieces of earth within the metal. Oh wow, she's a believe it. natural. Well, she's the I'm avatar. Bending. Wow, you picked that up really, really quick. Guess you're that one in a hundred. 
Bolin once again getting in his own way. I hope this series ends with Bolin just being the man, king of the world. He's already great, don't get me wrong, but he keeps doing this. I know that feeling though, the feeling of just being terrified to try something. I think typically it's a good sign. It means there's something there for you. It also probably means that there's a lie somewhere. And the lie is typically something you tell yourself about your own abilities that is not quite true or it's unproven. And we have a gut sense for the fact that once we step into this territory, we're going to find out exactly who we are. And that's really difficult when you have a certain image of yourself to let go of that a little bit, right? But it's only when you let go of that that you can actually start to find out who you really are. Kind of like Tenzin in season two. Oh, is she going to pick up Sue as a cop? These cars move a lot faster than they look like they should. I'm not letting you get away with this. Oh, what are you going to do, officer? Arrest me? Right, they're both metal benders. Her scar! She got it from her sister. Damn. One more pickup, then I'm clocking out. I thought you said you had a delivery. I'm gonna need you to step out of the vehicle and open the back of the truck. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not suspicious at all. Let's get out of here! Oops. They have no chance. You can do it, Bolin. Focus on the particles. sneak up on someone what are you doing remember to be yourself just thinking about my body and mustaches that i might have in the future <laughs> what <laughs> what does that mean i've been trying to metal bend and i can't figure it out it's embarrassing no i've been wanting to metal bend ever since i heard about Toph. your grandmother is my biggest hero you know what maybe i am scared but what about you i know that you want to go to the northern air temple to train with tenzin you're right I don't want to leave my family and disappoint my mom. Look at us, talking about our feelings, supporting each other. Wow, oh, they're moving fast. <laughs> All right. It felt a little bit like Bolin was deflecting, but at least it was useful. I think what Bolin is going through right now is really natural, but it's one of the most essential things to get over. Everybody wants to project a certain image of themselves, both to others and also to themselves. Taking on a big challenge like this, big projects, you have to eat a lot of crap, basically, because you start from nothing. And I think the reaction to that from a lot of people when you start embarking on those things is like skepticism. Starting out on a big project, you kind of are aware of that, like you feel that. And you have to just eat it. You have to just be okay with that and have a vision. And then have a lot of faith that you can actually get through the initial hurdle of like getting things started. And when you think about it, there's not really much to be afraid of because if you find out you're not what you thought you were, that's also good. And if you succeed, that's something you can just take with you for the rest of your life. And I think that the criticism that comes with that is A, nothing to worry about because that's more a reflection of the people criticizing you than it is of you yourself. And B, most people actually don't even really care what you do. They're not even looking at you. That's the big secret. Like we all think about what we look like to other people, but the truth is everyone's too busy thinking about themselves. That sounds bleak, but there's also something beautiful about that. It's freeing. It's like the only thing you have to worry about is yourself and your own opinion. I feel like she's almost there. <gasps> there she what is! What were you thinking? She's the one who was running around with criminals. This is all your fault. I was doing my job. Sue, you need to leave the city as soon as possible. What? Where am I supposed to go? Lynn, give me the arrest report. Wow, this is a big move for Toph. Mom, what are Ouch. you doing? Yeah. You can't cover this up. Once again, Sue gets to do whatever she wants and there are no consequences. I want to hear what you guys think about Toph's decision. I'm not really sure what the right answer is there. But I will say, for Lynn, the reason why she's so disappointed is not because Toph did something that broke the law, but just that she really does feel that sense of competition and she wants validation. She's looking for some kind of paternal structure desperately and Toph is just not willing to give it to her. So in Lynn's mind, that's a big loss. It's a shift in her expectations from the world. She's looking to have her feet on something. She's looking for solid ground to stand on, but she keeps going down and down and down and there's, there's no solid ground. There's nothing that she can rely on. There's no stable force. If even her mother will choose suicide. What does Lynn have left in terms of order? Even the police force she turned to to get that is now been somehow invalidated by her mother's decision. I don't need to rest. I need to do something I should have done a long time ago. Arrest my sister. <laughs> no, I don't know. What is she going to do? Congratulations. You're the first metal bending avatar. Cool. I've been thinking 
Good. Be honest. And I'd like to try to learn metal bending. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have a waiting list or something, like a couple years, so... Oh, here she comes. Sue, it's time we talk. Talk. <laughs> right. I admit that I was not a perfect kid, and I've made some mistakes in the past, but... <laughs> you made some mistakes? Lynn, Mom and I already talked about this years ago and worked things out. If you had gotten together with us like we'd asked, you would know that I'm a different person now. Yeah, I think there is something to that, and that was my first thought when they started this conversation. In Lynn's mind, the Sue she's talking to is the same Sue as the one she arrested, but Sue's had a long life. Where do you draw the line? When do you think enough time has passed for people to have learn their lesson or to be forgivable for their crimes, you know? It's way easier to be harsh when you're thinking about the mistakes of others than when we're thinking about our own mistakes, right? Like, I'll make a mistake today and I'll hope to be forgiven tomorrow. But when I think about people who have wronged me, you know, I can hold grudges for a long, long time. Lynn is not even really fighting with Sue here. She's fighting with some monster she's created in her own mind about something that's taken away this thing that she's been looking for her whole life but can't find because it was just never given to her. And she hasn't made the connection that it's just not gonna happen and she needs to find it for herself. You know what, Lynn? You're the one who hasn't changed. You're still a bitter loner who only cares about herself. No wonder Tenzin ended things with you. <gasps> You had to go there. Okay, I guess this is how it's going to be. <laughs> Tough daughter fight. All right, and they have all this metal around. Ooh. Out for blood, I see. Should I stop fighting? <laughs> you don't have any siblings. Fighting is all part of the healing process. My sculpture. My banana. Actually, it looks kind of better now. <laughs> cool. I mean, they can still move. They're doing pretty good. Living up to that Beifong name. Sue's chi is less blocked. What are you two doing? Your sisters. Why would you want to hurt each other? Oh. Nice catch. Yep, she's been going through a lot. Reluctant to trust this new Lynn. Opal, don't go. I want to talk to you. I wanted to say I'm sorry about the other night. It just occurred to me that it's extra painful for Lynn being here because look how successful her sister is after all that. You know, she started as a criminal and now she has this beautiful city, palace, five kids, a loving and successful husband. That just shatters your worldview of right and wrong. You know, like we like to believe that if we do the right thing, we get rewarded, but... The problem with that is we don't always know exactly what the right thing is. There's like a fine tuning that has to happen. And also, and this connects to Zaheer actually, which makes me think there's a thematic link between Lin and Zaheer. What you do is only part of it. Your motivation behind it and your character is a bigger part of it and resonates more strongly. And Lin in many ways seems to be doing the right things for the wrong reasons, which is gonna limit her field of view and prevent her from getting what she actually wants because she's so constrained. And undoubtedly that will affect her life negatively. Your mother and I have a complicated relationship and it's you don't say. incredibly difficult for you to be here. You're a smart young woman. I think it would be a wonderful opportunity for you to train with the other airbenders at the Northern Air Temple. I don't want to upset my mom. When I was younger, all I wanted to do was please my mother. I became a police chief because I thought it would make her happy, but it didn't. You need to make decisions based on what you want. Don't make the same mistakes I did. There you go, so there's value in that. At least she now could be a mentor for her niece, which is really nice. Is that another tough tattoo? Mom gave us too much freedom, but I feel like I've made the mistake of giving Opal too little. I think it's time I let her choose her own way. I can't imagine what my life would have been like if Mom hadn't sent me away, if I had stayed in the city. You'd probably be in prison. <laughs> You're probably right. I'd love for you to be a part of my life again. I do need a co-director for my new dance performance. Whoa, slow down. How about for now? I just promise not to show up at your house and attack you again. <laughs> Deal. Pretty good, pretty good. That's great. I'm happy to see some closure. We'll find her. It's just a matter of time. So here is letting go of his earthly tether. She's with the Metal Clan. You can see all that? Wow. So in this episode, we get some of the really heavy character stuff, which I'm a huge fan of. I love it when they deep dive into people's lives like this. It's probably some of my favorite elements of, of these shows. There's a lot in this episode to think about. It covers legacy, self-identity, 
family relationships, pure motivation or impure motivation, forgiveness, new beginnings, teaching. I'm always grateful for the chance to go over some of these things and really, you know, it makes you reflect. It's rare to have this kind of space where you can actually think about these things in depth in like a safe place where we get to watch Lynn suffer. <laughs> We don't have to suffer as much as a result, but I'm glad she was able to get some closure at least. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon for episode 7.